so today I'm going to teach you guys how to build my version of the Morris chair. It's made out of solid pine and I upholstered the seat myself. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that I always do in all my projects is I make a cut list of all the parts that I'm going to need. All the dimensions, oversized dimensions, so we can bring them down to uh, final dimensions uh, when we get closer to finishing. Then I just make some rough layout lines on all the boards. We're going to be able to build this project at a three and a half, one by twelve, by six pieces of pine. I picked these up at uh, Home Depot. You can get them at any home center. I chose pine. Um, so let's start cutting some lumber. Okay, now that we have all our woods cross cut, I'm gonna rip them. And the reason why I like read a cut list and that I think everybody should, I mark all my pieces roughly out on our boards. And this helps so if you're batching out a whole bunch of ripped pieces, you see I wrote on there five inches by twenty-three, then you can just set your saw and just run all your pieces through and you know what each piece has to be because it's marked on the boards. That, that's the way I do it, it's just easier for me, especially when you're cutting out a lot of different sized pieces, it just helps a lot I think. Okay, after we get our boards roughly ripped down, I'm going to just send them to the cleaner on both sides to flatten them up. Okay, next after we have everything cleaned down, to get the thickness of the leg we want, I'm just going to take two pieces and glue them together. I'm going to use glue and I'm going to use brass just to line everything up. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make the side rails and the width is 13 and 3 fourths on mine. Uh, I found the center which is 6 and 7 eighths and now I'm going over every inch and a half and making a mark and that's going to be where we drill the dowels to connect the slats on the sides. Tops and bottoms done for our sides, marked out, ready to go. Uh, I use my doweling jig. I love this thing. Uh, I recommend picking one of them up. I got it from Woodcraft. It was seventy dollars. Comes with the sleeves to do one fourth, three eighths, and I forget the other size. I don't really use that size, but uh, so you can do three different size dowels, and it's just it's nice and easy, you know, for for lining things up. It works real great. So, when using the doweling jig, there's, I don't know if you can see that, I'm trying to get it to focus. There's little registry marks on the inside, and then you just line that up with the marks on your piece. And once those are lined up, you know you're going to have a center hole. Now that we have all the centers drilled out for the top and bottom of our side pieces, we can work on the middle slats that go in between them. I'm using this marking gauge. I believe it's from Inker. I got it from Woodcraft but that has all these little holes in there and you can just slide it up and down on the wood and it's real easy to go up and mark the centers of all our pieces 
We'll do that and then we'll put the dowling jig on there and drill them out. Okay, now that the holes are drilled and everything, we can begin to assemble the side pieces. legs have had a chance to set up. I just have to take a plane, an old plane, not a, you know, because glue is just going to mess up the blade. So take an old plane, just go over the glue, get all that glue off, where you can use a cabinet scraper, or a spoke shave, anything to get glue off. I like to use a plane. <laughs> Now we can take these down, final width, the table saw. We'll take that freshly plain face, put it up against our table saw, and bring it down to three inches. Okay, now that we have our legs cut down to final dimension, we're gonna to begin to make the marks. The, for our mortises where the rails are going to go to connect the bottom together. I came up 8 inches. That's where we're going to start the mortise cut. And it's going to be 2 inches. So we'll make another mark at 10. We can always correct the fit of the rail. We'll cut that a little bit oversized and we'll bring it down to this mortise. Okay, now that we have our mortises marked, I'm just gonna use my homemade jig here to cut out these mortises on the table saw. I don't have a dado blade, so I'm just gonna take a long time in doing it. Okay, now that the side panels are dried up and out of the clamps, we'll just clean up all this glue squeeze out and all these lines. I find it much easier to sand when you can because when everything's put together, it just kind of gets difficult. Okay, the next thing we want to do is get our inner and outer rails connected to the legs. Uh, the first step is to thickness plane it down to our mortise and then bring it into width so it'll fit into our mortise. Okay, now that everything fits correctly, we'll begin to assemble it. I'm just going to put some glue in the mortise and on the rail and then I'll just, for alignment, hit one brad nail in there. We're going to add dowels later, but for now, just a brad nail to align everything. Okay, now that we have the whole bottom assembly ready for final glue up, 
what we do is we'll take the sides that we made. They're going to end up going like this, getting glued on. So we're going to dowel those together to the legs. So what I did was I just took it, made it flush with the top of our seat, and then I made a line where it comes off at the bottom. And then since I can't get the doweling jig to go flush to that line, I just made another line where we can line up our marks where the dowels are going to go in. So we'll line that up and we'll drill our holes. And then to get it so that it's flush to that, I'll make another mark. off of that line here. So then when we line up our doweling jig, we know that those holes will go right where we want them to go. we go. Goes right up to our lines. Perfect. Now we'll just do that to the other three pieces. And after we get everything assembled, this is what it should look like so far. And this is the bottom assembly. We'll go ahead and take that apart and give everything a final sanding and then we'll glue it up. Now that the base of the chair is being glued up, we can start working on the armrests and the side styles that hold the armrests up. I just drew on these patterns by hand and uh, we'll cut them out at the bandsaw. Okay, now that the side armrests are shaped, we're going to put a little round over on the sides of the top of the armrest. Okay, now that we have the armrest cut out and routed, we'll put them on the chair. Now that we have the armrests on and glued up, we're going to put the side styles that support the armrest underneath of them. And again, I'm going to use the doweling jig to dowel this to the legs. But first we have to find the center of our leg because the doweling jig, it, it won't open up this far to go over three inches. Um, there's an oversized one, but I don't have that one. So we're just going to have to drill these ones by hand. So to get the center, I'm going to go back to my anchor marking gauge here and it's three inches so we're just going to find the middle of three inches which is one and a half and it's marked either eight or sixteen depending on which one you do and then we're just going to scribe a line right down the middle we're going to do that on both the front and the back and then I just take our side style line it up and then I'll just put a line through both pieces so we know where to drill our dowels. Two will work. It's just for alignment. Then after we have those marks we'll drill them out. And there we go. A nice snug fit. That's not going anywhere. We'll touch that with some glue and a couple brads. Okay, now that we basically have the bottom assembled, we got everything put together. I made these uh, support beams 
I guess you could call them, that go in between our two rails that uh, support our seat. Um, I just put these in there, no cosmetic reasons, just for support reasons. Uh, we'll glue those in and use some two inch brads just to give this some, some more support because uh, there's not going to be any thing holding the seat up in the middle here. It's just going to be the seat. So we want all the support we can get. And this is just two by four I had laying around. You can use pine or you know any scrap lumber that you have laying around. Okay, now that we're finished with the bottom assembly for right now, we're going to work on the back. And I'm going to first start by gluing up two pieces just like we did for the legs. And that'll be the back rails going upward. Okay, so after I have the back rails out of the clamps and all milled up, I just have them quick clamped in a position, not permanent position where they're going to go, but just so I can get the measurement of where our rails are going to connect these back pieces. After we have all the back rails connected, we're going to do like we did on the sides and put in the slats on the back of the, of the seat. So we just measure down and mine happens to be 10 and 3 sixteenths. Can't get it to focus. But we'll go cut those out and put them in just like we did on the chair sides. Okay, then after you have both of your bottom dowels in, it should be able to pivot just like that. Now, this step will be different for everybody, but just get it so you can sit comfortably. You can recline the back as far as you want or as straight as you want. And then when you find a comfortable position, just get a quick clamp and clamp that into position. Okay, so here's the chair in its finished state. Well, not finished yet, but we have to put some paint on there. I decided to paint the project because I just want to paint it. I think that's going to look good to me. Um, you could stain it leave it like this doesn't matter it's up to you but I'm gonna paint it I'm gonna start out with a lighter color just to prime it and then I'm gonna go with a darker brown to finish it so we'll get a couple coats of paint on this thing and then we'll be ready to put a clear coat on okay now that the chair is drying we're gonna begin to work on the I guess you call it a sub base for the chair we're gonna put some foam and some leather over top of for our chair. So for the sub base we're going to use these old laddies. That I believe they're just pine. Uh, they went from an old bed that I had. So we'll just uh, take all these off and glue them together. Okay so now that our seat is glued up we'll take some measurements on the inside of our chair where we want our seat base to go. Okay after we take our measurements we'll cut it out at the table saw. Okay, after we have the seat cut to its final dimensions, I have this piece of high density foam, it's two inches, and uh, that's what we're going to use for the seat of our seat. So what I do is I just put it up against a corner, and then after we get that lined up, We can just cut around the edges and we'll have a perfect piece of foam for our seat. Okay, after we have our foam piece cut out, I'm just going to flip it over so that the top of it is the way that it should be with the foam. And then we'll pick it up and we'll just put it to the side for right now. Then we'll roll out whatever we're going to use to upholster the seat. I'm using this leather. I think it looks nice. So then we'll just roll that out. Stay there. And 
after we have that rolled out. And we'll put our seat back on. I like to make sure that I have more than enough on each of our sides. So I'm giving it about uh, maybe four or five inches, maybe six inches of excess over on each of our sides. So that way we have enough to pull it tight. So after we have our piece cut out, just get it as close to the center as we can. And that looks good. I'm using this pneumatic staple gun. You can use a hand staple gun if you want. I have that one. It makes it much easier to do. And then we'll just begin to wrap our piece. And there we have it, a finished chair, upholstered with black leather. Now the only other thing I have to do is put a couple coats of polyurethane on that, but for the most part this is a finished chair. Thanks for watching, please like and subscribe.